Hi guys and welcome to another Whiskey Geek Review. My name is Ben and today I'm looking at another Highlands whiskey. This one is Klein Leash, the 14 year old. Now Klein Leash as a distillery has some interesting and convoluted history behind it. Um, I have seen a lot of confusion and mixed versions of the story so I'm going to try and clarify some of it now. So you'll see it proudly stated on the packaging that Klein Leash was established in 1819 but to me it's somewhat academic because uh, it's no longer the same site, building, facility as it was back then. You see, in uh, 1916, Johnny Walker and Sons, the company that was making the Johnny Walker blends, now owned by Diageo, um, they bought a large uh, stake in stocks of the company that owned Klein Leach. The reason that they did that is because they were taking a high proportion of uh, whiskey, of spirit from Klein Leach and a bunch of other distilleries throughout Scotland to make their Johnny Walker blend. And so owning a portion of their stocks was helping to secure that supply chain. Then in 1967, a second distillery, also called Klein Leach, was built right next door, basically on the same site. So you now have two Klein Leach distilleries right next to each other, but the building, the architecture, the engineering facilities are quite different and the reason that they've built a second one there is because of issues on Isla with Kalila. They needed to renovate Kalila to meet demands, uh, to guarantee that supply chain and so they've built a second distillery over in the Highlands to make peated spirit. So then in 1969 the old Klein Leash starts producing spirit um, as Brora, which is a very peated malt, a uh, peated whiskey to replace the Kalila portion of the blends in Johnny Walker's. And then in 1983, Brora or Old Klein Leash shut down. They stopped making whiskey because there was no longer that uh, demand for additional peated spirit. Kalila was in full swing. Johnny Walker didn't need that extra. And so, much to the disheartenment of a lot of fans nowadays, it went quiet for decades, until very, very recently. So, the new Klein Leash facility continued to produce what is now Klein Leash. And I've seen quite a bit of confusion around Klein Leash, I think stemming from that disjointed story, being a peated whiskey. But I asked when I visited the distillery, I asked for some clarification, and they said it's not, it's not a peated whiskey. So this official bottle in Klein Leash holds this little wildcat emblem. Uh, it's a 14 year old age statement, bottled at 46% and it being Diageo, it will be coloured, coloured to some extent. That being said, I've got it down as a shade eight, so turns. Let's go into the nose. So straight away, I'm hit with this quite light, refreshing, grassy with citrus tones and a multi body. It's got that um, characteristic Diageo malt to it. White wine, a little bit sharp. Orange citrus and pithy tannins. Some sawdust. It's lightly floral, kind of uh, meadowy. Vinous, a little bit of butterscotch and honeydew melon. It's that multi dry oats a little bit green, a little bit resinous and a subtle prickle but it's all together quite composed. Let's try it out on the palate. It's a little bit oily, not particularly mouth clinging. It starts off quite soft, there's these waxy flavours coming through. There's a kind of subtle fruity sweetness, that honeydew melon and a a resinous woody note leads into a um, kind of peppery warmth that's developing and again those cereals those oats the malt is is there and present on the palate the finish is all about that peppery warmth that, that rolls through it's quite rounded pleasant woody note to it um, and some green grass hints of that orange citrus maybe and I think the tiniest hint on, on the tail end of caramel colouring it just kind of goes a flat bitter right at the back. 
So I've given this one a rating of 80%. There is a lot of people who really, really enjoy this one, hold it in really high regard. I do like it, but not quite as much as they do, I think. Um, the, the nose brings a really nice, uplifting, pleasant introduction. And then the palette begins to follow through on that. And this peppery heat kind of it, it belies what the rest of the whiskey was trying to do. Add to that, this um, flat bitter note on the end, kind of getting in the way of, again, what, what the rest of the whiskey was going for. I'm not 100% behind the recommended retail price and I probably won't be replacing this one anytime soon. I'm much more likely to look for some independent bottlings from Klein Leash because I think the spirit that they make is superb. The presentation here just doesn't quite do it justice. So thanks for watching guys, hope you've enjoyed this little whiskey review. If you have, please do feed the YouTube algorithm, like, comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff, and I hope to catch you in the next one. Cheers.